Hi guys, um, my name is Sanjay Gupta. I'm a consultant cardiologist in York and today I wanted to talk to you about a um, very poorly condi uh, understood condition um, which is uh, which causes a lot of distress amongst young people uh, and is because it's very poorly understood uh, a lot of people um, find it very difficult to get a diagnosis and therefore get the appropriate treatment for this and this condition is called POTS, postural uh, tachycardia syndrome. This is a condition which uh, largely affects young women between the ages of 14 and 45. Uh, these are perfectly functioning people, you know, doing everything that they want to, leading a good life, and then suddenly something happens and they develop these horrible debilitating symptoms uh, which cause them considerable distress. And the distress is compounded by the fact that they struggle to find a doctor who A, believes them, and B, knows how to manage them. Um, and so I thought I'd do a little video about POTS, and I, I, went up on, I went on Google and I tried to do some research, and I was struck by how much jargon there is. And so I, I as a doctor, struggled to try and understand it, and therefore uh, I wouldn't be surprised if patients found it very difficult to understand exactly what is happening to them. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to try and do a series of videos on POTS to try and allow people to understand actually what is happening and what to do about it, okay? So, and the first thing to say is what happens in POTS? Basically, POTS is a condition of orthostatic intolerance, okay, in jargon. What does orthostatic intolerance mean? Basically, when these people are lying down, they don't feel too bad. However, when they stand up, or when they adopt an upright posture, <coughs> they feel very unwell. Uh, they develop heart palpitations, they feel dizzy, they feel lightheaded, they feel t extremely tired, they may get a headache, and they cannot stand for a long time, and therefore they have to lie down. And what happens is that this persist. It shows no signs of going away. So it's almost like someone develops some kind of virus or something like that. And they are, they then say to me, it's like you develop a virus and you're laid in bed, but then the virus clears, but you never actually feel better and you're still, um, you know, stuck and you cannot stand up and you feel very weak and you feel very dizzy. And why is this happening to me? It's six months since this happened. It's, ha it's 12 months since it's happened. And a lot of people are left with this horrendous debilitating condition. Okay. In fact, 30% um, of patients with chronic fatigue syndrome actually have this condition called POTS and, it's not, uh, and often it's not diagnosed. Um, so it's just worth bearing it, this in mind. But basically they don't tolerate standing up over a prolonged period very well. Usually they will develop symptoms within 10 minutes of standing. All right, so let me just tell you a little bit about this condition so that you can understand what it actually is. POTS is considered to be a dysautonomia. Uh, what do you mean by dysautonomia? It is a disturbance of our autonomic nervous system. What is our autonomic nervous system? Our autonomic nervous system is that part of our nervous system that regulates our body functions such as our heart rate, our breathing rate, uh, our pupillary responses, our digestion, our urination. Um, and the way the autonomic nervous system does this is it has two contrasting systems. It has the sympathetic system, which we recognize as the uh, fight or flight uh, system. And then it has the parasympathetic system, which we recognize as the rest and digest system. So um, the, the parasympathetic system is a little bit like the the brakes and the sympathetic system is a little bit like the accelerator. So what tends to happen is, let me explain this to you in a way that you'll hopefully uh, be able to understand. Um, basically what happens is our autonomic system is in a nice equilibrium like this pen, all right? And then what happens is, for example, we get a little trigger. Let's say I'm walking out and someone jumps out at me in the middle of the night. Immediately, I, we know that my heart rate will go up. I'll start breathing harder. I've got this adrenaline rush going on. So basically what happens in this setting is that the, um, the trigger uh, comes, okay, so the equilibrium is like this, the trigger comes and immediately our flight uh, or uh, fight responses are activated, our parasympathetic system is activated, we get this adrenaline rush, all right, our heart rate goes up, our breathing rate goes up, our pupils dilate, and then as time progresses and as we start getting used to the trigger or the trigger is taken away, the parasympathetic system starts bringing this back to equilibrium. 
So anytime we get sympathetic activation, you know, we get this trigger, and the greater the trigger, the higher the rise in the sympathetic system. And as time progresses, with a little, after a few minutes, um, our parasympathetic system will bring it back down. It's worth remembering that when our um, when we get this kind of flight or fight um, response, you know, it is incredibly tiring to the body. You know, our heart rate is shot up, our respiratory rate is shot up. So it is incredibly tiring, and therefore it's not surprising when people get scared or they've gone through something which causes a massive adrenaline rush. They say, "Oh, I need to sit down. I'm tired." You know. Uh, now, um, if you have a very big trigger, you get a very big rise in the sympathetic system. In parts, what happens is. For some reason, the pivot point is brought down here. Okay, so now what happens is a small trigger causes a huge rise in the sympathetic system. And then it takes much longer for this to settle. Again, trigger takes much longer to settle. Uh, and as a consequence, small things which activate our sympathetic system, which we wouldn't ordinarily even notice, cause an exaggerated increase in the amount of sympathetic activation and we notice it. One of the small things that causes a rise in our sympathetic system which we shouldn't notice is changing posture. When we stand up from a line position what happens is our sympathetic system gets activated. The reason it gets activated is because suddenly gravity would pull all our blood down because we've stood up and our brains would go without blood. However, our sympathetic system gets activated, our heart rate goes up, and it keeps the blood up to the brain. And, but this happens sub unconsciously. We're not aware of an adrenaline rush every time we stand up. But in POTS patients, what happens is this very, very small trigger causes a huge rise in the sympathetic activation. And therefore, our heart rate shoots up much more than would be normal. Normal would be less than 30 beats per minute, uh, and in POTS it's above 30 beats per minute. So the heart rate goes up, the breathing rate goes up, uh, and people feel tired, you know, people feel dizzy and generally just yucky because they're not, it's, it's a very uncomfortable feeling to have this big kind of adrenaline surge when you're not, when you're just standing up. And so people feel dizzy and they feel tired and then they say, oh no, 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 I can't stand up. I need to lie down, okay? And as they lie down, then things start normalizing again over a prolonged period of time. And this is what is happening in POTS. A small stressor causes an exaggerated amount of sympathetic activation, an exaggerated amount of an adrenaline rush in the body. And because we don't recognize that we're doing something to cause this, it is incredibly, incredibly uncomfortable. So I hope, um, this makes sense as to what happens in POTS. Um, if you find that you are someone who struggles to stand up for a prolonged period of time without feeling dizzy, it is worth getting this investigated. And the way you do this is you do a tilt table test, which is a test where people uh, put you in various positions and measure your heart rate responses. And in POTS, what happens is the heart rate shoots up much more than normal in an upright posture as a reflection of this increased, exaggerated sympathetic uh, activation. So uh, I hope that in some way allows you to understand POTS in an easy way, um, because I hope that if you understand what's going on, then A, you feel empowered to be able to help yourself do things. And I'm going to talk a lot more about POTS in the next few weeks, because I'm determined to try and increase the understanding of this poorly understood condition. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, if you did, please uh, comment, uh, leave, um, uh, you know, subscribe, uh, leave uh, a like or something like that because that makes me feel really good. And um, if you get the chance, please come and join me on my Facebook page, um, uh, which is accessible by typing in w uh, yourcardiology at gmail.com in the search bar on Facebook and you'll find me. And also you can email me on yourcardiology at gmail.com and you can also... Uh, reach me on my website, which is www.yourcardiology.co.uk. So I hope you found this useful. Thank you so much for listening and all the best.